are now watching the Amazing Mets pregame show with your hosts, Rob and CP. Let's go Mets! Let's go Mets! Let's go Mets! Let's go Mets! What's up, Mets fans? Welcome to the Amazing Mets pregame show with my boy CP and the special guest today, Sunny Days in Flushing. We got Matt here to join us today to talk a little Mets baseball and the road trip that the Mets just had. Four and two road trip, beat down of Atlanta, and now we come back home to face the Royals for a three-game set. And, of course, we place the Pirates as well. But let's say what up to everybody. CP, Matt, how you doing, guys? Boys, thank you for having me. Uh, much appreciated. Done some shows with, uh, done quite a bit of shows with Chris. First time here with you, Rob, and uh, great to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Chris, what's up, buddy? Rob, you know, it's always a pleasure. Happy to see my boy Matt on here. Guys, this is like a special, special pregame show. It's Friday night, fresh series, fresh off of two series wins, one against Atlanta. Everybody in the chat, I hope you all are hyped. I'm ready. I'm hyped for some baseball right now. And I got just this immense feeling pumping through my veins right now. And that is Mets baseball. I know we're five and seven in the season, but the momentum, you can just feel it kind of swinging. I really hope the Mets take that into tonight and we'll talk about it. But um, it's a great time to be a Mets fan, especially going down and putting a beat down on Atlanta, like you said. Absolutely, absolutely. The best, the best thing about the series just in Atlanta was not just that they won the game. Obviously, that's important. But it's the way they won the games, the resilience. Where we, me and Chris talked about it, God knows how many times over the last week or two since the season started, was we wanted to see when this team got punched in the mouth, can they get back up and punch back? Well, they clearly punched back. You know, they won that that nail biter first game. Yes, they lost the the second game, but the comeback almost happened, and we saw them fight back. And then we know what happened. Uh, the, uh, yesterday when they beat down the Braves 16 to four and Matt, I want to, I want to get your thoughts on this. And d I wonder if we have the same thought process with that. It wasn't just the winning that was exciting. Cause that's, that's the most important part, but what did you, what did you want to see? And what did you see with this Mets team when you were watching that series against the Braves? So what, um, what was so great about this? So it was supposed to be a four game series. We all know game three gets rained out. There's nothing we could do about that, right? That's Mother Nature. And um, the Braves being pussies because they don't want to play in a little, like, drizzle. But that's not my problem. That's their fucking problem. Um, it now becomes a three-game series. And you take two out of three in a park that has given you fits. Fits since it's been built. Uh, the Mets have done shit in the city of Atlanta for years. And they come down against the team with probably – I don't. I didn't look at their batting average. I know they had the number one OPS – in the league up to that point and you smack them around and like you said rob they come in game two and they lose by one run they almost almost tie it up in the ninth um so and and the fact that they were able to win game one without edwin diaz without Adavino, without a lot of these i think or i don't even think brooks Rayleigh pitched in game one um so without their without their horses in the pen they were able to win game one uh, you know, so it was a sandwich series. They took they took the bookends. That's what you want to look for, and that's a real that is a real confidence boost, right? So now we know April baseball, right? You want to come out of April five hundred or better, right? We know that April baseball is sloppy. It's not indicative of the entire season, but to go down to and thank God, thank God, we went down and played them in April. I would so much rather do it then then have to go down in the middle of July and then go down again in September. Fuck that. It's like playing the Kansas City Chiefs in football. My Lions, I wanted them week one. I didn't want to see them in December with the with with their, their division on the line or a playoff spot at this point. I wanted to see them week one where they're going to make mistakes. Same thing here with Atlanta. Um, we beat the shit out of them, especially that last game. That was awesome. Uh, fuck that fan base. Fuck all of them. I can't stand Atlanta. So beating them feels better than beating the Yankees. Feels better than beating the Phillies. Anybody else, fuck Atlanta. That was great. 
Uh, and that's a great Atlanta lineup they have and a great yeah. pitching staff they've got. So that's a great litmus test. Um, it sucks to see Spencer Strider go down. As much as I hate Atlanta, I don't ever want to see guys get hurt. And it is genuinely an epidemic in baseball right now with these pitchers going down, uh, elbow and shoulder injuries. We're dealing with it right now at Sanga, going to the 60-day IL. That sucks, but this is this is a motor that's got to keep going. And the Mets have proven that they have done. Well, they have they started out zero and five, and they are now five and seven. So to me, that's fantastic. Absolutely, and, and you know what, Gary Cohen said it best. That that place has been a house of horrors for years with the Mets. Even in twenty twenty two, where we kind of held our own, it was still ended up being the house of horrors at the end of the year when we lost the division. Chris, let me get your thoughts when it comes to this Atlanta series because it was a lot of fun. I mean, we deserved to sweep that series, at least the three-game set out of the four, one with the rain out. What, what were your thoughts um, after the series? I know you were pumped. Everybody was pumped on X, Twitter, whatever the hell you want to call it. Let me know your thoughts in that Brave series. And what did you like to see the most from that team that they actually showed you in Atlanta? Yeah, man. Uh, Rob, I've been out of town, so I just got back in town. I was on the way up when the, the Mets were smacking the Braves around 16-4. to four. Um, Heard and saw Luis Guillorme get on the mound. Talk about a full circle moment for, for the Braves and Luis Guillorme. Respect his time on the Mets, but that was just like indicative of how huge and how like well this series went for the New York Mets. Listen, the bats came around. Um, I've been sort of waiting for the bats. We've been all waiting for the bats to come around. We were like, okay, Cincinnati hitters ballpark. Well, guess what? On the video that I dropped today, going over a brief synopsis of the last two series, the, the bats really didn't come around like I really had hoped in that Cincinnati series. The starting pitching really, um, you know, held their own in Jose Quintana, Sean Manaya, and Luis Severino. And I was sort of still waiting for those bats to come around. Brandon Nimmo, the Brandon Nimmo game in the 8-7 to seven win, two home runs. DJ Stewart providing two home runs in the series as well. I know he's only batting a, a buck 05 still, 105 on the season. We'll see, like, how long of a leash the Mets give DJ Stewart, but it's good to see him knock a couple balls over the fence in the series. Starling Marte getting two hits at the end of the, the series there in that 16-4 to four win. Brett Beatty, can we talk about Brett Beatty <laughs> consistently playing lights out? offensively and defensively guys listen this team i've said it on the video that i dropped there today if you missed it go check it out um right before the game time but like i said this is only the tip of the iceberg that we're going to see from this mets team not everyone is still gelling like not everyone is at the top of their game at the same time right now we're still waiting for francisco Lindor's bat to come around pete alonso getting a little sluggish with the bat too we need him to step it up when everybody in this lineup starts to gel then we're gonna see true 2024 New York Mets baseball, these new expectations. But this is like, like you said, the litmus test with these two series, especially the Atlanta series, Matt, this is something you build off of if you're the New York Mets. This is something you go into Friday night, blackout Friday night, right, with your, with your sexy uniforms, whatever, in front of the home crowd, and you go and rip the Kansas City Royals a new one. And you just prove to everyone that that 0-5 start, that 1-5 start heading into Cincinnati was not the same New York Mets as you're going to face right now. So um, I love the way this team is vibing. I love to see Brett Beatty every single time he makes a defensive play, waiting for Francisco Lindor. They're getting hyped together on the left side of the infield. This, like, the camaraderie, Rob. We talked about it so much this offseason. It truly seems like the guys are now settling into their own and having fun. Listen, I'm going to tone it back just a little bit here because I am hyped and I'm really hyped to see what, what tonight's going to bring for us. But it's only 12 games in. But just the process, I'm starting to see things that this team can build off of. And that's absolutely huge for momentum's sake. So I love it. Bats came around continue to hit the ball, continue to get into the opposing team's bullpen, and this team will be just fine, I'm telling you. Yeah, and, you know, everybody said it great here. Like, it was important, even though Atlanta is kind of down right now, you know, they, they have a lot of injuries, and I said it uh, prior to the series, they're all the most vulnerable right now, and you got to take advantage of those Ws right now because if you don't, when you face them later in the year, when they're probably more healthy and, you know, just, you know, a full engine moving, it's going to have a hard time. You got to get those wins now, especially with a team that's on the fringe of probably low 80s type win team. That's probably, you know, a 
a possible wild card team. You have to take advantage of it, and the Mets did. But I love the way they played. You talked about Brett Beatty, who who's just shown all types of emotion and confidence. Like when he made that uh, leaping catch yesterday, you saw how he turned, looked to Lindor, like he was like, "Yeah, bitch, I got it." Like that's how that's his emotion right now. And you know what? The confidence wasn't there ever since he came up. Two years ago, we know the problems he were he was having. But not only he's doing it with the bat, the glove is outstanding right now. And it, it clearly is all about confidence with him. The talent's there. If the confidence continues with the, the performance, I mean, we got out third baseman for the, for the next 10 years, everybody. And that even makes it even easier for the Mets going later on in the off season when you got to look for certain other things and you don't have to worry about third base. So, uh, Matt, I'm going to get to you with today. Michael Walker's on the mound tonight. The, the guy is still pitching at probably, what is he, 41 years old now? Um, he's another one. He's probably a player of House of Horrors. We know how Michael Walker has done damage to this Mets team over the years. You know, he was a part of the Mets for a very, very little bit of time. But what do you want to see from this Mets team going back home with a little bit of momentum with the 4-2 road trip because this is a good young Royals team. What do you want to see? Do you want to see the pitching pick it up since the offense has done its job? Or where do you? what is the X factor in this series against the Royals? Well, playing the Royals, I guess it's kind of a pick your poison when it comes to uh, <laughs> anything anti-Mets, right? Because you were either going to see Michael Waka or Seth Lugo. Um, so – I don't know who you'd rather see. Right now, they're both pitching really well. Uh, this Royals team <clears throat> has looked really well. So, uh, I, I would like to see, as you guys kind of uh, alluded to before, I'd like to see the momentum continue. I'd like to see, I mean, listen, you know, if, if Marte keeps doing what he's doing, if Nimmo keeps doing what you know, it's more than just getting on base. Nimmo's shown us some power in the past two weeks now. He's putting balls over the fence. He had a triple yesterday, I believe. Uh, base is clear and triple. So if, okay. if, if though, I mean, for me right now, I look at Nimmo and Marte as the catalyst to this lineup. These two guys, if these two guys get going, I think the rest of the offense can kind of take care of itself and do what they have to do. Right. You get Nimmo and Marte on base. Hopefully Lindor does something right. I mean, that's, that's a topic I guess for at some point, um, and then that applies that applies pressure to the opposing to Michael Waka when Alonzo and Beatty come to the plate. Those are two guys that hit the ball hard. They have the potential to put the ball out of the park. And if they don't, Alvarez might just do it. So uh what do I want to see? I want to see the momentum continue. I want to see some consistency. And if I'm looking for two wins in this series, I'm looking at tonight. And I'm really, I would really love to see this team win Sunday. Not only because I'm going to the game, but it's Doc Gooden Day, right? They're retiring his number. And, um, you know, that's a guy, if I could just get into that a little bit. I mean, that's a guy that was so, so important to that 86 team. Him and Daryl and Keith and all those guys. Um, and Doc, Doc has had a rough past. We all know that. But was a phenomenal, phenomenal pitcher. Top top three in in franchise history i mean you could argue maybe he's the best maybe tom maybe jake who knows uh, but the fact of the matter is he's one of the greatest to ever put on this uniform and what steve cohen is is consistently doing i mean top to bottom the way he has structured this organization taking guys from his hedge fund at 0.72 and employing them to improve the mets um you know trying to do a a quick rebuild and buying players that didn't work and what did he do he didn't he didn't um he didn't double down right because a lot of people they double down on their mistakes steve didn't do that he cut he cut ties immediately and rebuilt the farm system and now what does steve do what, what is steve going doing he's retiring guys numbers that should have been retired years ago keith hernandez has been in this booth since i was i don't even know in fourth grade um, he was so important that 86 team for some reason, the Wilpons couldn't stand him finally gets his number retired this year. They're doing, they're doing Daryl and doc, um, long overdue, well-deserved. And I really can't wait for that Sunday. But, uh, in terms of, in terms of the Royals here, you, the bats got to stay hot and you know, whatever you do at tonight's game, this whole series, if you're going, if you don't want to give Lindor that ovation, that's fine. He's a professional. 
I mean, the man should be playing better than where he is. Like, that's just a fact. That's just a fact. Uh, yeah. But, you know, and I'm not going to tell anybody not to boo. Like, you paid for the ticket. You're paying the $18 a beer, so do whatever the fuck you want. But, you know, yeah, maybe maybe the Trey Turner treatment does lift this guy up. I mean, anything at this point, right? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to take I'm going to pick up right where you left off. Like it's a shame to see this fan base on X. I tweeted something out earlier today about just like the overall conversations that are being had, whether you need to boo or cheer on Lindor. Listen, these guys as a collective unit, it's not all about Lindor. It's not all about Alonzo. It's a collective unit, right? Like this is a team that we're cheering on. They're coming off of a huge series win in Atlanta. What are we doing? What is this conversation? Let's cheer on this team. What is with the bad vibes? Like, I don't understand it at all. Like, I'm not sitting here sulking because Francisco Lindor is not even batting 100 on the season yet. Like, what are we doing? Let's get a grip. First of all. Second of all, to answer your point, Rob, uh, no, before I answer that point, Matt, <laughs> absolutely great job calling out what, what Sunday's events are going to be. Doc Gooden, obviously, Keith Hernandez coming And get there early. Too. If you're going um, to that game, if you're going to that game, yeah. sorry to interrupt you, Chris. Get there by one o'clock. Be in your seat by one o'clock. The lines yeah. are going to be long. I mean, take the train early. Get out of your car early because those lines. Like I remember the Keith game. It was like yeah. it was. Like, we got a, we got a, we got like a, a season ticket entrance an hour ahead of people, and it was still a forty five minute wait. So get there early. Sorry to interrupt you, Chris. No, no, you're good. It's 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 great events that are happening. But um, yeah, no, I agree with you. I met Doc Gooden a couple of years ago. Great guy, fantastic guy. Definitely like one of the all time great Mets. Like definitely deserves this and has been long overdue. So no, seriously though, um, please support Francisco Lindor. The stuff that we've been seeing on social media about what his wife and and obviously his family has had to endure from just bitter, bitter people overall is absolutely ridiculous. So that there's no place for that whatsoever. I can't like do this stream and not call that out because that's just absolutely ridiculous. And there's no place for that. No matter if the guy stinks, no matter if he's performing well, no matter if you like the guy, don't like the guy, doesn't matter. You can't do that. Unacceptable. Um, one name also to sort of move this along, Jeff McNeil. Shout out to Jeff McNeil. I want to just say shout out to Jeff McNeil. Hell of a series against the Braves. Let's clap it up for Jeff McNeil. That's what we need. And he is one of my focal points in this series, along with Francisco Lindor, those two bats. One's at the top of the lineup at the three spot, and one's towards the bottom at the seven spot. Both have to do their jobs offensively this series for the offense to keep rolling in each half of the lineup. To answer your question, Robin Short, Francisco Lindor and Jeff McNeil are my two X factors. We could talk about DJ Stewart. I know Rob asked me earlier in the chat about Harrison Bader. Do I want to see Tyrone Taylor over Harrison Bader? Yes, absolutely. Do I understand or even like why we're seeing Harrison Bader? No. At the end of the day, the two guys I'm looking at this series is Francisco Lindor and Jeff McNeil to propel this offense. Brandon Nemo has been doing a hell of a job. Francisco Alvarez has been doing a hell of a job, and so is Brett Beatty. And you can even lump in Pete Alonso to one of the key factors here because he's been slumping a little bit. But Francisco Lindor and Jeff McNeil, those are my two guys. Yeah, and, and, you know, that's good. Two guys that are big X factors here. If those two get, get going, especially at home, you know, the fans are going to go crazy because Jeff McNeil, as much as I, you know, get on him, he's a guy that fans like. Fans love him a lot. Like, every time they talk about trading him, people go nuts on X. Like, it's the end of the world. And Lindor, the family thing is just ridiculous. We all know that. If you want to go to the game and boo him to, to the heavens – Fine, he's a professional. He can deal with it. I don't. I don't expect Mets fans to give him a standing ovation. I, don't, I. We don't have to do what Philly did with Turner. I don't care about that. If you if you think you deserve a standing ovation, what what you're doing right now, then you got worse things to, to think about at the plate than worry about fans giving you an ovation. Even though if they do it, great. Uh, you know that's cool. But you you can't continue to struggle and then say it's every everything else. You know, it's the fans, it's this, it's that. Even though Lindor historically is a slow uh, performer in April. We all know that. If you look at his numbers in April, even with Cleveland, it wasn't very good. He starts to pick it up when it gets warmer. And that, that's been a thing that's been his whole career. I know it's really bad right now, but that's just 
who the type of player he is. He picks it up in May, June, July. Again, yeah, man, I'm sorry. No, I, I wanted to ask you, Rob, because I, I, I like, like two things with with Lindor here. Like, this is the this is the shit I'll never understand. With well, I understand why with Mets fans, and it's because Lindor is making money. Like, if Lindor was if Lindor was like Brett Beatty's age or something, nobody would give a shit. Like, yeah. But I just don't understand. I don't understand two things. I don't understand why there can't be a middle ground with Francisco Lindor. Like you, like he is the one, probably most polarizing player, the Mets have had on their team since I don't know how long, and <laughs> people either love him and he could do no wrong, or people hate him and no matter what he does, it's never good enough because he doesn't have a high batting average. Yeah. Like I don't understand why we just can't. Look at him as like he's a tremendous fielder. He does this every year where he doesn't hit in April and then he picks it up. As you said, Rob, once the weather gets warmer, like Lindor has the opportunity to totally take games over. We saw him do it in the Subway Series in 21. Like like the guy and the guy, the the bigger the moment, I don't think that really affects him because you see him strike out in the first no. inning. You see him strike out in the ninth inning. It really doesn't like the magnitude of the moment doesn't matter with him. I don't think it's pressure. It's just he's streaky. That's what Francisco yeah. is. And I just don't understand why we can't just be like, yeah, that's Francisco. He's not He's not the best player in the league at this point. We'll never really be in that conversation, and that's okay. Like, just just be – like, just accept him for what he is. He's a he's a damn good baseball player that goes on his streaks. Now, my, my, only, my only issue with when Lindor goes through these slumps – is why do we have to bat him second or third in the lineup? That's that's my only complaint. That is my only complaint. When he's going through these slumps, why is it a crazy thing? And I, I don't know if it's in his contract. Uh, I don't. I, I know. I I remember when he was traded here that there was some agreement that he he wanted to bat second or third every day, whatever. But like when you were kind of at, at this point, let's be honest. When you're a liability at the plate, it's really not fair to the rest of the lineup that you're batting second and third. It's not. And that doesn't mean I want him benched. I don't ever want to see him benched because even if the guy is batting zero, we need that glove. We need that glove out there. He is a wizard in the field. There's no doubt about it. But I just, I, I to me, I feel like there are other guys that could be batting up that high. And and I just think it's, it's, it's just, it's so, it, it like, it's, it's like demoralizing when like yeah. tonight, like Nimmo will get a single and maybe Marte strikes out or something, and then Lindor hits into a double play, and you're like, "We knew this was going to happen. Why was he batting second or third? Like, and it doesn't mean I don't believe in him. It's just right now, while you're batting under a hundred, maybe go back to the bottom of the lineup until you pick yourself back up again. What do you, is that crazy? What do you guys think? No, no, I, I agree with you with that. Like, I never understood that. Like, I don't think anybody should be, you know, stuck in a position in the lineup. I think if you're struggling, you're hurting the top of the lineup. Like, if, if you take Lindor out of there and say put Beatty in the third spot and maybe Alvarez in the fifth spot, maybe bat Lindor six, you know, give him a little bit of a chance, you know, to be in that, that last part of the lineup, not a lot of pressure on him. And let the, the guys that are doing well in the top of the lineup, you know, do some damage so it doesn't have to fall all on him. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you already said it, Matt. You know, he's going to end up having people on base, and he's either going to strike out, hit into a double play, he's going to you're going to hit a boo birds, and it's going to be a trickle-down effect the rest of the game. And then it starts the next game as well, especially if the Mets don't win. The, the thing with Lindor, what annoys me about Mets fans, and I know it's about the money and the contract, I'm going to – I call out Mets fans enough on X – on, on YouTube, it doesn't matter. Chris knows this. People hate me when I say this. When Alonzo gets his contract from the Mets and it's $25 plus million plus and making a ton of money, keep that same energy that you get on Lindor with when Pete Alonzo gets his big payday. Because when he goes on his big struggle, which he's another one, Alonzo too, where he looks lost at the plate for a week and a half, maybe two Keep that same energy, and I want to hear Boo Birds. I want to hear people get on X and get on Alonzo. I'm not talking about his family. Get on Alonzo as a player. Mm -hmm. Get on him as well because the problem with it is it's the biggest problem with Mets fans that I can't stand. I don't care if he's homegrown or not. It's the, the homegrown thing. Is, it's the homegrown. Yeah, it's, it's so stupid. Oh, it's so it. stupid. It was, look, yeah, it is. You're wearing, you're wearing the laundry. What's the difference? Correct. I root for the laundry. People are like, oh, I'm going to stop being Mets fans if Alonzo's not – um, a Met bullshit. 
Okay, because people said that with the Grom, and I see people that talked about if the Grom's not a Met, I'm not a Met fan. But yet I saw see him at City Field on opening day. Listen, you root for the laundry. Uh, do we want a homegrown that can stay his whole career? Of course we do. Of course, it's nostalgia. It's great. But you know what? You know what I want to do? I want to win. At the end of the day, it doesn't have players' names on that trophy. It has the Mets on that trophy. That's what I want. And you can love the player all you want, but keep the same negative energy with Lindor when Alonzo gets his big payday or whoever gets a big payday, if it's Beatty or Alvarez. When they struggle, I want to hear the same energy because that annoys me because I'm not saying don't love Alonzo. I know why people are all over Alonzo and you can't say bad things about Alonzo or this and that. Oh, he's our best player. Technically, he's not our best player. Mm -hmm. You know, if you really look at it, I look at all aspects of the game, not just how many home runs you hit. You know, th that's a big thing in baseball now. Like an overall player is a guy like Francisco Lindor, right? He'll give you 25 to 30 home runs, 90 RBIs. He'll bet you 250, 260, and he'll give you gold glove defense. Pete Alonso, the defense can be a little suspect every now and then. Like in that Atlanta game, Atlanta series, the way he stepped, to catch a ball and didn't stretch and stretch the wrong way. He's quirky in that aspect. Again, he's got a lot better when he first came up. But the fact of the matter is, I want that same energy. But let's stop with the negativity because, you know, Mets fans can – we always love <laughs> negative somewhere. But I just like to see the same energy for all players, regardless and, of if they're homegrown or not, if they make more money. And the because only reason Lindor has not gotten a gold glove – I firmly believe is because of his contract and his batting average. Because we all know, we all know if he was hitting 295 with like a, a nine something OPS, he'd be getting, a, he would have gotten two gold gloves already. Because you cannot tell me that there are, that, that, that in the past, since he's gotten here in the past three seasons, there has been three better defensive shortstops. There hasn't. Like, you have to yeah, be able to separate the two things. All right? You could call out Lindor at the plate all you want, and you know what? Most times you're right. He has he has not lived up to his contract in terms of where what he's done at the plate since he's gotten here. I'll agree with you. But I, me personally, man, I, I, don't, I don't remember the last time I've seen a shortstop play this good defense this consistently yeah. for this Stevie. year. Stevie Mac makes a great point. Juan Soto has a gold glove, and that's just absolutely ridiculous. So Anthony I agree Volpe with you, Stevie. Absolutely. Anthony yeah. Volpe has but, a gold glove. And, and, and Trent, I don't mean to cut you guys off of the whole Lindor, Pete Alonso talk, but we do have first pitch in nine minutes, and I want to talk about the guy that we're going to be seeing directly today on the mound, and that is yeah. Luis Severino. Um, last you. time out, last time out, Luis Severino pitched his ass off to me personally. He encountered one disastrous yeah. inning because of a misplayed ball by Tyrone Taylor and also an error from Jeff McNeil that allowed the inning to extend. Um, two runs given up in total over five innings with seven strikeouts. One of those runs were unearned for Luis Severino. The amount of hate, not hate, but like the amount of, I guess, bashing that Luis Severino got from the Mets fan base after that disastrous innings, inning, was absolutely ridiculous. Luis Severino had a horrible first outing, but that outing against Cincinnati, albeit he did have a couple of walks, he gave a, a couple of walks. I understand that. He pitched his ass off in the face of adversity um, with some not so good defense behind him. So I'm really curious to see how he bounces back. Obviously, that was on the road, but he got smacked around a little bit against the Brewers. At home, how does he respond back at home here, City Field, against a pretty decent damn team in the Kansas yeah. City Royals? That veteran presence mixed in with that young presence. I want to see what Luis Severino does today. And Michael Walker he, has been... been putting together great seasons back to back here. And we all know, like you said, Rob, at the top of the stream, how good of a veteran that he has been against the Mets. So I really want to see this pitching matchup. It's actually very curious to me how Luis Severino goes about today's start. Sevy has been subject to some awful defense his past two outings. Yeah, I mean, yes. I'll give him that. Yeah. Like, he hasn't looked great, but after those bad innings where there were errors, I mean, because if, if you look at his stat line, yes, he's got some earned runs, but he's got like three or four unearned runs. Yeah, count, you know, that don't count against him, but he's got three or four unearned runs on him so far this season. I mean, after those innings, he really, he really settles down. So this is a guy, to me, I think by 
it, you know, hopefully the end of the month can really hit his stride. The only thing I ask, and I ask this of all the Mets starters, because really none of them have done it, let's get through the sixth inning. I mean, <laughs> let's get through the sixth because we we can't continue to tax this bullpen. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I agree with you. Like, like it would be nice. Like, I, I would hope Luis Severino, because he has this stuff. And we know Mets fans can't wait to get on him when he's bad because he's a former Yankee. It's more because of that than him probably being bad. But he's been, like you said, Matt, he's been pretty good. Like, if you look at his overall stat line, it's not bad. And the defense hasn't been good. I mean, Zach Short made a big error in one of his right. starts that really hurt. That uh, I think led to two unearned runs. Like there was a lot of things that went on defensively that, and that was when the Mets were going through it all uh, through their first six, seven games of the season. So I want to see Luis Severino. I want to see more strikeouts. To be honest with you, like he he got too good of stuff to yeah. have a high pitch count like he has in the fifth inning and, and get knocked out of games and we have to use you know basically our entire bullpen to get through a game we got to save our bullpen a little bit as matt said but um chris i wanted to ask you one thing before we got a couple minutes before the game starts do you like the lineup tonight yeah i i like the lineup tonight and obviously they're playing righty lefty uh with dj stewart which is fine whatever the only thing I can call out here is Harrison Bader. Like, I don't know why he's playing over Tyrone Taylor, yeah, to be honest with you. I prefer Tyrone Taylor, but beggars can't be choosers. Um, ninth hitter in the lineup. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Harrison Bader. Everybody on this channel that knows me, it, you know, I, you can attest that I'm not a big fan of Harrison Bader because this guy's bat stinks. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. His bat stinks. Um, regardless of what he brings defensively, his bash is not good. But nonetheless, I do like the line of construction. I really do like confidence, and not even in this game, but over the last couple of games, Carlos Mendoza has not hesitated to bat Brett Beatty in the fifth spot, has not hesitated to bat Francisco Alvarez cleanup. Like, he's entrusting yeah. these young guys in Brett Beatty and Francisco, uh, Francisco Alvarez in those key spots in the lineup, and that is – what I love. Obviously, we have to play the waiting game here, JD Martinez, but I do, in short, I do like the lineup tonight. I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you know what? Listen, I, I, Chris, I, I guess I'm biased because I personally have always loved Harrison Bader. He was a Met killer when he was in St. Louis. Um, so maybe that's where it comes from. But, or at least I feel like he's a Mets killer because every time I turned on the Mets when they were playing the fucking Cardinals, this fucking guy was catching everything and putting balls over the fence. Uh, to wrap it up, I think, I think if you're putting up, if you're an offense that can, if they can keep doing what they just did in Cincy and Atlanta, I don't care if Peter strikes out every time because he is he's a patrolman out there in center. There's few that gets past him, you know. He's what gets past him a ball he dives for that he probably wouldn't have gotten anyway? I mean, personally, I love him. I love his arm. He is, to me, in the field, he is a younger version of Starling Marte. He, he's, a, he's a fantastic fielder. And if your offense is producing, you know, that bat, Bader's bat doesn't look so bad if DJ Stewart continues to do what he's doing. And Nimmo and McNeil, if all these guys are producing, you could afford, you could afford a strikeout from Bader. If he's playing gold glove defense out there, which for the most part, he really is. I Yeah, go ahead, Chris. All I'll say is I'll take the trade off with the glove from Harrison Tyron Bader Taylor. to Tyrone Taylor yeah. to get the increased bat with Tyrone Taylor. That's all I'll say. Tyron Taylor's That's no fair. slouch in, in the outfield. I understand how great Bader is. Obviously, like gold glove caliber. I'm not going to dispute that, but I'll take yeah. the drop off to get the extra offense with Taylor's bat. That's my whole point. That's it. No, it's, it's fair. And especially knowing you could put yeah. Nimmo at center and Bader in left. I totally, yeah. totally get that. Totally get yeah, that. Yeah, and you know what? Bader's glove is, is worth keeping out there. But uh, again, Tyron Taylor, I, I like him in the lineup. But Bader's a gamer. Like, there's, like he's going 100 miles an hour all the time. Like, you never see him not hustling, you know, or anything like that. Like, if, if he's striking out and just not performing well, like, not hustling, he, he's always a gamer. But you know what? I'll tell you right now. When there's a big game in the postseason, Bader – is going to be there for the Mets. I'm telling you that right now because he did it with the Yankees. He, he did it with the Cardinals. Um, he was the best player on the Yankees a couple of years ago when the Yankees uh, traded for him in the postseason. The guy has clutch numbers in big spots. So Bader right now struggling, and can he stop trying to get uh, take a single into a double? Stay on first base. Yeah, please. you're killing us yeah. here. My God, but like, Rob, I know by that time, oh my God. you're talking October. 
by that time, I don't think we'll be talking about Bader. Um, I think we might be talking about Drew Gilbert. I think is he, by that is time, he really okay? I know he heard the the injury uh, with the leg. He was okay, right? Because I haven't, I haven't really. I checked didn't even know he got hurt. Yet. Yeah, he I was hurt. Play. I don't know how. Okay. I think it's okay. Like I think it was like a strain or something like that. But look, if we see Gilbert, I'm, I'm okay with it. Like I think I don't think we're gonna see any other young. I one guy I think we're gonna see is Luis Acuna because I think McNeil is one step away from getting traded at the deadline, regardless if the Mets are in it or not, to be and be quite honest with you. Hey, Rob. Even though He's got value. He's got value, 100%. Hey, Rob, you know who's killing it in the minor leagues right now that we're both a fan of and that he's been going a little bit on the radar, but he's killing it. He's 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 killing it in double A right now. You know who, you know who I'm talking about? Never heard of the guy. <laughs> he who shall not be named no i guess i'll keep his name quiet here until uh we get some more sample size on him but keep an eye out on him i'm gonna just say that right now everybody you talking about a pitcher knows podcast. No? you're not you know? talking about a you talking oh, about a pitcher no we're talking about an outfielder okay yeah. i i if we're talking about kids that might come up i i really i mean especially if, if hauser keeps looking the way he's looking one of Christian Scott or Dom Hamill, or one of those guys will be up here before Memorial Day. If Hauser that should be a talking there. point, by the way. And by the way, Jose Buto is pitching Sunday. I don't know if you guys saw yes, that. Yes, Jose so, Buto yeah, season. Yeah. I'm all for it. That's what I was going to say. Let's go. Dude, let this fucking kid, let this fucking kid pitch once every five days. You have no yeah, reason absolutely. not to. You have no Sanger right now. Like, let, he came out and he struggled a little bit in that first outing. But, like, he said, just like Sevy, he settled down. And he's a young kid. And you know what? None of our starters are getting to the sixth anyway. So what the fuck is the difference? Let this kid come out. Let's let's use this year. I, I mean, I say this to every Met fan. Let's use this year to play all the young kids we can. If we get to the playoffs, great. But let's see where the investments need to be in 2025. Yeah. That's what I want. That's all I want out of this year. All right, guys. So the game's about to start. Matt, final thoughts. Let everybody know about your channel and uh, what what do you what is the expectation in this series for the Mets? You think they're gonna take two out of three, or you think they're gonna struggle here? I I think I think they're gonna come out hot tonight. I think um, are they wearing black? No, they're wearing white. I thought they're gonna wear black tonight. Um, they're gonna wear black too. Wear black. I really, I, you oh, know um, what? Hot take. I think I like these new black jerseys more than I like any of the black jerseys they've worn before. And I never thought I would say that. I, I but it. <laughs> I really I really like the blue and orange outlining. Um I think the Mets take 2 out of 3 and I'm excited to see Jose Buto live on Sunday. I'm excited for that. If I'm excited for anything, that's see, what I'm excited. This is like Doc, huh? <laughs> yeah. A little gas. Absolutely. But, but thank you guys for where, having where me. your channel is and yes. uh, find you. I'm sorry. You on on, sorry on YouTube, Sunny Days at Sunny Days Media 516 um and uh on on Twitter at flushing sunny 41 we don't have an instagram account yet i have had a lot going on we've had some home improvement issues we've been dealing with uh here here at uh, casa de pasque so my my apologies but um we're gonna be back on youtube okay. again this week uh rob and chris thank you guys very much this was a lot of fun i would love to do this again so anytime you guys want me you got me absolutely chris what do you got buddy Final thoughts. Nothing. I got nothing. No expectations for this series. I'm keeping no expectations for the Mets. I'm not going to predict the score. I'm not going to predict the series outcome. Nope. I want to see good baseball. Severino is off to a good start getting the first out here. Keep this up. Let's go, Mets. I appreciate it. Everybody subscribe, not only to my channel at CPNY Sports, but also if you somehow haven't subscribed to the man up top, in Rob, make sure you do so. And the guy right over here, Flushing Sunny, uh, forty-one, no, five one six. It's no, 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 Flushing Sunny forty-one is Twitter. Yes, at Sunny I'm Days link Media five one six. And check out my video that I dropped earlier today, doing a synopsis of the last two series. Let's go, Mets! As always, get hype. Let's get hype. Get hype. Get hype. Let's go. <laughs> get That's hyped. Matt. That's CP. I'm talking Mets at Rob. The amazing Mets pregame show. Another one in the books. Let's go, Mets. Let's take the series against the Royals. Let's have a great home stand, guys. As always, Mets fans, let's go, Mets. Have a great night. See you next time, guys. Matt, CP, have a great night, guys. Let's go, Mets, baby.